Hi everyone, so with the basic tutorials videos done, what I wanted to do was start focusing on other aspects, uh, more advanced mechanics of the game, beginning with ballistic weapons, which are a subset of weapons in the game, and they're typified, uh, I suppose, in a couple of ways. One, that they represent slower moving projectiles, um, and two, that unlike other weapons in the game, they fire during the initial orders phase, although they don't hit until the firing phase, um, and the firing phase is when uh, every other weapon in the game is aimed and fired. So, uh, I w I've picked a sort of random selection of ships here just to demonstrate the different types of ballistic weapons, and I'm just going to go through them one by one um, and show you how they work, and then just sort of describe them in a bit more detail the sort of advantages um, and disadvantages of each. Um, so, starting with the Apollo Bombardment Cruiser, which is a modern Earth Alliance vessel, so a very, very powerful vessel actually, and you'll see here it has a number of missile racks with pretty good arcs, um, and if you hover over them, let's go with the class L missile rack. Uh, so what you'll see here is that uh, range, um, so ballistic weapons, uh, unlike other weapons, uh, have a set range, and you've got two numbers there, 30 and 70. The 30 represents the range which it can be fired at, so it can be launched at any enemy units within 30 hexes of your ship. Uh, the 70 number is less important. As essentially what that means is if a ship is in 30 hexes when you launch but then moves out of those 30 hexes, the missile could in theory follow up to a distance of 70 hexes. But that, that almost never happens because the enemy ship would have to be moving at 40 hexes per turn, which I don't think I've ever seen. Uh, the next thing to notice is the damage, damage 20. So that's quite high and that's per missile. So when when these do hit, they, they tend to do quite a lot of damage. And then uh, you'll see that this is a the ship I've taken actually has special missile racks which allow it to fire a, a range of different missiles. But we're we're not going to go into that because I'm going to do a separate video on weapon modes, um, and I can cover that then. Uh, the and the next thing is just the weapons type. It, it lists as ballistic. So if you're ever unsure that that's a that's a good way of finding out what type of weapon it is. Whereas the standard particle beam. The, uh, the weapon type is particle. And again, I think I'm going to do a separate video on weapon types because they are quite a number of different weapon types and it's worth just kind of uh, going through them. Okay, so let's target one of the enemy vessels with uh, a missile. Let's just target the, the Primus there. Um, unlike a normal weapon uh, for the missile, you'll see it has a 60% chance to hit. Now, it's an initial orders phase, so we don't know what the enemy EW is yet. Um, so that's just the base hit chance based on the profile of the ship. So at the minute, the calculations assume that the Primus goes full defensive EW. So you can see its defense is 30 from the front um, and 35 from the sides. Now, and how do we get to the sort of 60% hit chance? Well, missiles uh, are don't do not benefit from offensive EW. So you can see if I, t if I take the Apollo um, and I target full sensors uh, on the Primus and then detarget the missile, try and target again, it's still 60%. And the reason the missiles don't benefit from offensive EW is because they have their own sort of inbuilt fire control. Essentially, it, it's fire and forget. Um, and it's sort of for this missile in particular, um, I think this is quite standard for missiles, is 30 for everything. So 30 for fighters, 30 for medium and heavy ships, 30 for capital ships. Um, so 30 base hit chance from the front on the Primus, plus 30 for the missile, gets you your 60. Um, and there's no real way for me to improve that hit chance, uh, but we'll if the Primus, once initial or orders are over, and we know what the enemy's done with their sensors, if the Primus committed less defensive EW, then that hit chance might go up for instance, but there's nothing in the initial orders phase I can do to improve that hit chance. Uh, which might seem like a disadvantage, but you have to remember, because I don't have to commit offensive EW, that means I can keep all my defensive EW, keeping my missile ship safe. Um, and that can make quite long range bombardment uh, vessels, because they can maintain a high level of defensive sensors and keep their distance, making it 
means if the enemy does want to shoot that vessel back in a normal map, which this is a very small map just for the tutorial, in a normal map means that they're going to really have to commit their offensive EW to have a decent chance to hit you, um, and they're probably going to eat a few missiles um, when they do that. So missile vessels can be very strong, and it's one of the reasons you tend to see that in fleets they're restricted to 33% of your points cost, um, and that's that's one of the reasons why they're they're quite powerful. Uh, just sticking with missiles, you see that fighters also can carry m some fighters, not all fighters, can also carry it. So this is the gamma version of the Star Fury. Uh, they're allowed missiles, and again, if you hover over a dogfight missile, uh, in terms of the stats, how these work, it's exactly the same as capital ship missiles. You see that the damage is lower, the range is much lower, and in fact, the range is only eight. So on this turn, I would not be able to um, launch a missile at any of the enemy vessels here, um, which, you know, is fair enough, their fighters are small missiles. Um, and I think that's really all I wanted to say on missiles. So they're, they're sort of like your most basic ballistic weapon, and now we're going to talk about some of the different ones, the more uh, quirky ones. So starting with um, torpedoes. So torpedoes are quite similar to missiles in the sense of this is a Bintac with an ion torpedo. and in terms of the damage is a bit lower, the range is a bit higher, so torpedoes are typified by having longer range than missiles, and the fire control is, is a little bit different. So torpedoes not very good against fighters, decent against um, heavy ships, and uh, a bit better against capital ships. So that's different, and that's because they do not have this sort of onboard fire control in the same way that missiles do. What they do though is they benefit from offensive EW. So you can see there in Torpedo, the base hit is lower, but um, as I commit more sensors from the Bintac, that base hit goes up. Um, and that's really sort of that the extended range um, and the fact that they benefit from offensive EW is one of is really the sort of key differences between missiles um, and torpedoes. Uh, and some fighters can also carry torpedoes. Again, same benefits. So Whereas the uh, the Aurora missiles were too short ranged, you see that the light ion torpedoes on the Tarza torpedo fighters, Narn fighters, um, they have a much longer range, range 20. So in fact, if I wanted to, I could right click on all of these, and I, they could also target the um, the Primus. Their hit chance is 55%, and that is again made up from the base 30% chance to hit from the front, plus um, fighters. Because they don't have EW themselves, what they have instead is an offensive bonus, which in this case is 25. So 30 plus 25 gets you your 55% chance to hit. Um, and you can see now that the, the the various ballistic weapons are starting to stack up on this poor Primus. But we'll, uh, we'll keep moving on. Okay, um, and the next ballistic weapon we, we've actually seen already in one of the other tutorial videos, that's the Energy Mine. Now it's different from missiles and torpedoes in that it doesn't target uh, an enemy vessel or flight of fighters. What it does is target a hex instead. And what will happen, all being well, is and the f when it comes to firing, so if you imagine that is launched during the initial phase, it's traveling all the way over there, and at the end of the firing phase, or the beginning, actually I think the beginning of the firing phase, uh, when firing has been resolved, that will explode. Uh, anything in the middle bit there will take 30 damage, and the surrounding uh, adjacent hexes will take 10. Uh, so they're quite good um, just as a sort of area denial weapon if you have enough of them. Um, in fact, they're very strong that way. Or you could just fire sort of one per turn, keep your opponent guessing, and start influencing how they maneuver. Because what they don't want is to move the fighters there, because the energy mine will quite quickly. Um, destroy or force a lot of them to drop out uh, and that's a huge loss especially early in the game uh, and we can just place them there uh, what can happen with the energy mines is uh, sometimes they just dissipate they have a base chance of say you're one on a d6 I think it was I can't really remember from the tabletop game it would just not explode doesn't do any damage uh, infuriating when you, you've managed to successfully guess where all your opponent's fighters are going to go and it just dissipates, but hey ho, that's that's the roll of the dice. Um, the other thing that can happen is it can deviate slightly, so again it has a 
not insignificant chance of deviating so whatever hex you wanted it to go on it might deviate um, in a different direction and potentially hit your own ships. One of the, the unusual things about energy mines is that uh, they can damage your own vessels as well as enemy vessels. So you have to be a bit careful um, and I have wiped out a couple of flights of my own fighters um, by, by forgetting that, that fact. Uh, and the reason that they, they actually can, can do that is because they damage everything in the hex which is uh, because they do f whoops. Uh, turned it off because they do flash damage and again we'll cover this in damage types but flash damage essentially damages everything uh, in, in the tile uh, okay so moving on I think the next thing we want to talk about is uh, probably the last ballistic weapon I could think of and this is in this sort of minor race actually the Mark Ab who you, you, you may remember from the show um, because they became extinct I think. Certainly I remember them meeting some unfortunate fate. But what they before that happened, they had developed quite an interesting ballistic weapon called the Plasma Wave. The Plasma Wave's a, almost a mix um, of the energy mine and a uh, torpedo, in the sense that you still target a ship, so let's continue to target our Primus over here. It does benefit from offensive EW, but if it hits that ship, and only if it hits, it does nothing if it misses, um, it will damage in flash damage and also plasma damage, so it ignores a bit of armor and also damages other units in the hex. Um, although I think it's 25% of the damage. Uh, so it will do full damage to the Primus, 3 to 30, so very variable damage. It could do virtually nothing to 30, which is quite a lot of damage. Um, and then 25% of that damage will be done to, to other units in the hex. Okay, and the last uh, ballistic weapon I wanted to show you was just the Centauri Ballistic Torpedo. Um, now, I forgot to take uh, the, the right ship in, in the game we were just in, so quick cut to um, another game that I set up. And what we have here is a Demos Heavy Warship, which I know Fred's talked about in his Centauri videos as well. And what we have here is a Ballistic Torpedo, let me just untarget it, and it works slightly different in the sense that it could, it's one weapon can launch multiple torpedoes on the same turn. So you target it uh, much the same way as a normal torpedo, so enemy ship, 55% chance to hit, uh, I can increase that with EW. And uh, the main difference with Ballistic Torpedo is you can then choose up to a maximum of six how many torpedoes you want to launch this turn. So it's, it's preloaded with six at the start of the game. And if you click on the plus, uh, you'll see that goes to two out of six. So I'm launching two torpedoes, three, four, five, six. Um, and then if you change your mind, you can just use minus to lower that. Uh, I'm going to go with three, nice uh, straight down the middle. And each turn, uh, one torpedo is reloaded. So if I launch three this turn, that would leave me with three out of six remaining. Um, and then one will be reloaded, so I should have four out of six um, possible torpedoes to launch next turn, if I choose to. Uh, Damage-wise, the, the ballistic torpedo has the potential to do a lot of damage, uh, but it's very variable, like the plasma wave. Damage is 2 to 20, so if you roll 20 for three torpedoes, that's a lot of damage. Um, more typically, though, you find that you get kind of middle of the road rolls, armor comes into account, and it doesn't do quite as much as uh, it might look like on paper. But nonetheless, there's a sort of uh, medium range way of harassing your opponents on approach. So you can start gunning them down with the heavy arrays. It can be a very useful weapon and it features on a few Centauri ships. Okay, um, so that's all the ballistic weapon examples that I wanted to show you. What you might be wondering now is, oh my gosh, how how do I stop these missiles and torpedoes and plasma waves from decimating my fleet before I before I even get to shoot back? Well, there there's quite a few defensive options here, and another uh, we'll just sort of go through one. I mentioned defensive EW, that is effective against all of these um, missiles, iron torpedoes, plasma waves. Everything uh, will be affected by defense VW. So you can set that quite high, and that will give you a, a much better chance of, of not being hit. Uh, of course, that does limit your, your offensive options, but it's sort of like your your, your normal mode of defense it still applies to ballistic weapons. Um, more sort of specific to ballistic weapons is a 
defense from your your sort of light weapons, your intercept guns. So we haven't really gone into intercept in too much detail, but essentially, normally when a gun, let's say a particle gun, uh, is being fired at you, so like standard particle beam here, uh, what would happen is the first weapon which is trying to intercept that would benefit from its full intercept value. So for a twin array, it has two guns at negative 10 each. Uh, but for each additional weapon beyond the first, you half the intercept rating I get. So the first intercept shot, minus 10, the next one minus 5, and so on. So it becomes decreasingly effective uh, per additional intercept gun that you're trying to intercept the shot with. That doesn't happen with ballistic weapons. Because they're slower moving, uh, they're easier to hit, and so there's no degradation of intercept chance. So a twin array, let's see, and the Primus has many, many twin arrays. So what they have here is actually eight twin arrays that are all in arc. And in order to intercept a, an incoming weapon, your weapon needs to be in arc. How can we double check that our weapon's in arc? Well, you can see the blue. Um, that's the arc of the weapon. You can also, when a ballistic weapon is launched, the hex, it's easier to see in the fighters, will go bright orange. That tells you the launch point, um, and then hexes which have been targeted ballistic weapons will turn red. That tells you where they're coming from. So, I look at the premise, I see, right, I know one class L missile rack has targeted me. Um, I deduce that that has come from the Apollo, because they're the only ship in the field with class L missiles. Um, and then I check my arcs, and I was like, yeah, I'm fine. All my twin arrays can intercept that missile coming in. Now, there's a lot of, of, of coming in, um, and when it comes to the actual intercepts firing, the, the game will automatically do this. But I can start doing the maths in my head and work out right, 8 times 2, because uh, they're twin arrays, uh, that's uh, minus 160 intercept rating. And you can start adding them up and saying, like, do you know what, just based on twin arrays, I'm pretty sure I could get the, the class L missile rack down to zero, I could get the iron torpedo down to zero, I could take 20% off the plasma wave as well for a good measure, leaving the plasma wave a 50% chance to hit, and then the six lighter torpedoes, which I'm, you know, as a fairly well armoured capital ship, I'm less worried about at 55% chance. So, that that's one um, weakness, I suppose, of ballistic weapons, is that they are much easier to intercept. Uh, although not every ship will have be blessed with quite as many intercept defensive weapons as, as the good old Primus. Uh, the next thing you can look at uh, for all fleets is fighter escorts, because, um, and I think we saw this a bit in the show, but fighters can actually shoot down uh, missiles coming in, but only under very specific circumstances, and that is if they are escorting that ship. Now, th this is turn one, so I've, I've picked a bad turn to sort of demonstrate this. But if you hover over fighter, you'll see escorting all. And that's because in turn one, uh, fighters are assumed that they are able to escort any ships. From turn two onwards, the fighter needs to start and finish on the same hex as the ship it's escorting. But if we assume that to be true, then the fighters, and again, so long as their weapons are in arc, and always remember fighter weapon arcs are quite narrow, so it has to be pointing the right way. Fighters can also shoot down missiles um, that are targeting that vessel. Uh, and you'll see their intercept rating tends to be about negative 10 per gun as well. So, so that would um, give me another negative 60 um, intercept chance for those six fighters. Another, it's a bigger flight, nine fighters, another negative 90. And I, I could actually probably make sure that three of the light iron torpedoes don't hit at all. Um, and what I'm going to do, uh, actually no, the other thing I wanted to point out was just, this is very Centauri specific, So, um, and I think Fred actually talked about Guardian Arrays um, in his sort of in-depth exploration of the Centauri fleet, but I just kind of want to show them in practice. So they have Guardian Arrays, which special rules is, they c you can actually place the Celeste Escort here in front of this ship, and these Guardian Arrays should be able to um, intercept missiles that are passing past this lust and, and hitting the Primus. Um, so we've got two, I think, that are going to be an arc. Um, so that will give us an e extra negative 15 each there. Um, but 
again, I'm just showing that for fun. Most fleets won't have access to the Guardian Array, uh, more is a pity for them. So what I'm going to do is now just sort of advance this game to the firing phase and I'm going to do maximum amount of intercept um, and you can see that uh, what the see if any of these missiles actually end up hitting, which actually given my defensive options, they may not. Okay, and here we are. So let's have a look at what happened in the firing phase. Uh, you can see the energy mine explodes harmlessly because I didn't want to blow everything up with it. See the plasma wave, um, we'll just pause that there. Plasma wave, chance to hit 0%. And one of the things I did in the movement phase, just while uh, I had the video paused, was stack both my fighters with their guns pointing forward um, so that they could uh, take in to, uh, they were in arc of all the origin points of the ballistic weapons, so they should have all intercepted. And what you find is all the heavier weapons I have, and they're actually the Class L missile, 0% chance, you can reduce that hit chance um, so that you can guarantee that it won't hit um, and keep the Primus safe. So, let's keep going, see what happens. Uh, the Ion Torpedo, again, 0%. Ah, so now we have the six light Ion Torpedoes that the uh, the fighters launched. And there's a hit chance between 5 to 55. So what the, the algorithm's done, essentially, is reduce as many as it can to 55, uh, sorry, 5%, uh, which is very low chance of hitting. Um, but some, there wasn't enough intercept fire to cover everything. So some of them did um, benefit from the 55% hit chance. Uh, unfortunately, none of them seem to have, to have hit either. So everything is missed. If you look at the Primus, uh, you can see fully healthy. And that's because I was able to basically stack all my defensive fire to such an extent that um, none of the, uh, the offensive ballistics hit. Now, of course, I didn't fire all the missiles from the Apollo. I could have probably overwhelmed the defensive fire more. Uh, but I just kind of want to show you the possible that it, it certainly is possible to defend against missiles. At first, they can seem quite overwhelming. But there are things you can do. And this idea of sort of stacking units in the same hex, that, that's quite uh, an effective defense if you have a lot of fighters. What um, you do have to watch out for, though, of course, is some that do flash damage and can damage other units in the hex. So if that plasma wave had hit, it could have potentially destroyed all those fighters. So again, tactical choices. Um, another tactical choice to sort of point out as well is in turn two, so let's resume game, you can see these fighters are now only escorting uh, ship one, the Primus. They cannot, um, unlike in turn one, escort the Celeste. So by moving it in front, I've actually left that a bit vulnerable. And so what I could do this turn is target all my missiles on that. Uh, and it wouldn't have the benefit of the fighters helping shoot down those missiles. Uh, and you might find that the escort then takes a bit of damage. So again, as ever, tactical choices. Um, and you're trying to outwit your opponent. Uh, but that has been, I think, a sort of nice run through um, most, if not all, of the facets of ballistic weapons. So I hope you found that helpful, um, and I'll continue producing these videos. I think uh, we're hoping to do uh, a few more in the next week or two. Thanks, catch you later.